Hello, I'm Jessica, and you might notice that I'm practicing in a very surprising place today. I'll tell you why in a minute. I've been spending a lot of time, like most of us, on screens recently, and I've really noticed that it has an effect on my playing and how inspired and creative I feel. So I've been thinking about what I and my students can do so we can enjoy things more. One thing professionals do in that situation is to change something, just one thing. It can be anything, but here are four suggestions. The first one is being curious about our instrument or our vo voice. Practicing is very important, but sometimes closing the book and just exploring our instrument is really helpful. So for example, if you play the piano, maybe getting someone to help with the pedals or looking inside the piano to see what different sort of effects are possible there. The same with wind, brass, percussion, you know, what kind of different sounds? How does that instrument actually work? Um, for strings, for example, how many hairs are there on a bow? Where do they come from? And how do they stay in place? And why do they fall out? Or with the strings, how does the sound go inside the brown box and come out nicely? It's quite fun to experiment with different sort of effects. Um, so for example, we usually play on a string instrument in the middle, but we can play behind the bridge or in the peg box or we can pluck with either hand, or we can bounce, play more than one note at a time, um, or we can do some scratchy sounds, or some slides. There's so many options for different sounds, which we might not automatically play in our pieces, but sometimes there might be an opportunity just to play them for fun, which would be a really interesting thing to do. Even 30 seconds of being creative on our instrument gives our brains a break from possibly a really busy day at work or study or just a little bit of space just for us to engage with our instruments. And there's no right or wrong when it comes to improvising and every time it can be different. The second tip is to take an easy piece, something that you love, might be something you played a long time ago, and to revise it with a twist. So improvising around, let's say, Twinkle Twinkle, which most of us have played in our lives, would be really fun. There are already hundreds of variations of Twinkle Twinkle, but we can use whatever techniques or styles or ranges or rhythms or pitches, whatever we like. So for example, if I was playing Twinkle Twinkle, my own version, I might play something like this. and I'm enjoying what I'm playing is really valuable. Once we've done that, then we can easily extend that to the music we're studying at the moment. So we might have um, some scales and arpeggios or sevenths or some studies, some technical work, or maybe just a tricky bit in a piece we're learning at the moment. And the principle is that we extract that, imagine we sort of memorize the bit, take it out in our heads, out of the piece, and then improvise around it. Solve whatever technical problems there are by improvising, and then put it back in. And the great thing about that is that then when we come to perform it, we won't be so worried because we'll have played that tricky bit in dozens of different ways, and it's really liberating. And no matter how we arrive at that bit, whether it's at a bad angle or whatever, we know we'll be able to cope because we've improvised around it. So it's a really, practical, helpful tip for anything that's tricky as well. The third tip is to change the light that we practice in. So I love, for example, to practice in the dark. I'm the last of a very long family, very big family, and sometimes the only silence in the house was very late at night. And I would just turn the lights off and practice in the dark. It also helps memorizing, but just improvising in the dark means we've got no distractions around us. So if you can, it might be worth doing. I always had to put a practice mute on so I didn't disturb anybody, but sometimes you can, um, even if it's the daytime, perhaps close the, close the curtains, pull down the blinds, put on some sunglasses even, 
makes a real difference in focusing on the quality of our sound. Um, and it makes even, you know, if you're singing, no matter what instrument you have, you can just play, play with that sense of space around it. And the fourth thing, which explains why I'm in my bathroom, is to change the acoustic. Now, obviously it's not so easy to move a piano, um, but even still, you could open a window, perhaps, and that will change the sound quality of the instrument. Um, I love to practice in my bathroom. It's the boomiest room here. It's free, um, and it gives such a, such a supportive sound. It's boomier than any concert hall in the world, but it has such a supportive sound that if I'm playing something and I make some slips, then obviously I'm aware of them and I'll fix them later, but it, it means I can kind of continue on really easily because the, the, they get slightly lost in the acoustic. So then the next time I play, I'm a bit more relaxed and then I'll make fewer slips and then I'm more relaxed and eventually all the slips hopefully will get ironed out and they won't be there at all because it brings, it's almost like meditating. It brings that sense of calm and release and focus. Um, so that's the fourth one. Um, and of course, once you've got the hang of that, then it's quite easy in your head to hang on to that thought when you really are performing or recording on a video because you've practiced it in your head and you've practiced it in your bathroom or your kitchen or in outside space. So there are the four tips. I hope they've been useful. So the first one is being curious about your instrument or voice and what it can do. The second one is about revising an old piece, anything, and adding your own twist and improvising around that. The third one is about changing the light and possibly doing it, practicing in the dark. And the fourth one is about changing the acoustic um, and see what effect that has. I hope you're going to be excited about getting your instrument and having a little go at this. Decide to change one thing and see what difference it'll make. Let us know, and I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.